Okay guys, welcome to this tutorial on how to configure BinReader. I will um, just quickly show you the uh, most important options and also the options that are a little bit more uh, for advanced users so that you can get the most out of BinReader. Right, so first of all uh, enter settings by clicking on settings obviously. Uh, yeah, we are about five tabs and uh, we are going to discuss three of them. First of all, of course, there's NNTP server and that's where you enter the uh, host name and uh, login data for your Usenet provider. So you've got, um, if you already got Usenet uh, user provider, you've got this information from uh, them by email, I guess, or you can find it on their website if you don't have a provider right now, or well, check out our great reviews on uh, www.theloadguru.com to get more information on uh, which one to use. Okay. So either way, um, if you got the information, you just enter the username, password, and the host name, and then you have to decide if you want to use SSL encryption or not. Uh, this uh, option is called Does the server support SSL encryption? No idea why the S is where, but uh, it's just there. Well, you have three options. Uh, you can choose Nope. That means that uh, everyone can theoretically scan what you download, so your network administrator or your ISP, if your service provider, can see what you do online or what you download from Usenet. And then there are two options for encryption. One is yes on official port 563 and that's the port that most user providers offer. For most uh, users this will be the obvious choice. And then there's also um, yes on port 443 evades traffic shaping. Now not all providers allow you to use this port for SSL uh, Usenet downloads, but if they do, the advantage of using this port is that uh, some user provider, some um, internet service providers and network administrators, particularly if you are uh, using Usenet and at your uh, university or at work, um, some uh, administrators like to throttle downloads, so to make them slower. And if you want to unblock or uh, unleash the full power of Usenet in these cases, it can help to use port 443 if your Usenet provider allows it. One important notice, not all Usenet providers use the same host name for regular and SSL encrypted Usenet access. For example, AstroWeb, as you can see here, they want us to add an SSL in front of the hostname. So uh, check with your Usenet provider to see what's the right uh, way to do it for you. Right. And that concludes the server tab. Now let's move to advanced. Maximum number of connections to server. Very important if you don't use enough connections, especially on very fast um, Usenet uh, uh, um, internet speeds. So if you have a very, very fast internet connection, for example, we have a connection that uh, allows for a maximum of 150 megabits or uh, about 70 megabytes per second. Uh, obviously, we need a few more connections. For most people, about uh, uh, 10 will be okay, but and it isn't uh, always a good idea to use too many user connections. We recommend that you just start at a re relatively uh, low number, for example, about 15, and then you check download speeds. Then you can go back to the settings and start increasing the number of connections until you see that you've reached, uh, reached the maximum speed that your internet connection can give you, so that you have uh, maximum speed. 
So just uh, we have a usable 20, I think it will be okay for most users, but if you had a really fast connection, then uh, this would be an interesting thing to do to get better speeds. Buffer downloads in memory. If you've got a reasonable amount of RAM, do this. Because it will make, uh, it will reduce the amount of, um, of times bin reader will access your hard drive, which might make your computer very slow, uh, at least in our cases. It always helped us decrease the load on our computer to enable this option. So buffer downloads in memory, generally a good idea to do. Only download part 2 repair blocks if post is incomplete. It's a good idea to check this. Because for a um, lot of people that like to um, reduce the amount of data that they download, very important if you are on a volume restricted um, internet plan, so you, know, you only have a certain amount of gigabytes that you can download every month, uh, every month. Um, this can decrease the amount of uh, files that bin reader downloads, so less traffic. If, of course, you like to do things manually or for some reason, for any reason at all, you want uh, the whole post, uh, uh, Usenet post on your computer, you can uh, disable this and bin reader will just download everything. Otherwise, it will just downloads, download as much part to repair blocks as needed. Automatically repair downloads. It's a good idea for most people. This is about download automation. So if you are one of the users that just loves to um, import an, an NCB and wants uh, the newsletter to do everything like repair the files and extract them, this is a good option to use. Remove files from download list when finished. Well, that's up to you. We don't uh, use it, but some people like it to keep their download list like here clean. Your decision. Raw handling. Three options here. Uh, of course, this describes uh, with uh, controls if BinReader automatically extracts the uh, downloads that you have, because all downloads on Usenet come in form of archives, a lot of uh, part archives, so we got about 50 or 20 little files that uh, all contain a file. And if you'd like Binreader to handle the whole thing for you, so that you only have to um, use the file and don't have to handle everything, you can use this option. Disabled means Binreader doesn't do, Binreader doesn't do anything, so you have to do everything manually. Start extracting while you download. Me as a um, very handy option because it will start extracting the files right away as uh, while the download is still running, which uh, reduces the, the time that you have to for the download to complete. So if you like to have uh, things done quickly, use this. However, if you want to use the computer um, for gaming, for example, while the download is running and you don't want any load to be mm, well if you don't want your computer to slow down while you do so and you uh, want the program to um, only start extracting and putting load on your, on your computer after the download is finished then you can use this option it will uh, make um, the uh, whole processing and downloading time to so it will uh, increase it a bit, but um, it might come handy for some people. We love to keep it at start extracting while you download. It's just the best way to do it. Download follow, obviously, where you want your files to download at. NZB monitor folder. If you have a guy that likes to download NZBs on your hard drive, and want your newsreader to automatically scan the folder for new NGBs and then import them to the software, like start downloading and stuff, you can use this um, option. Well, I don't think it's important for most users. So 
Nice to have if you like stuff like that. You can just leave it blank if you are not planning to do anything uh, special or if you're not a more advanced Usenet user. Media player. This is for previewing files. Just leave it as it is. It, uh, it does the job, so no reason to change it. User interface, language, the skin, so you can make the program look like this, or like this, or like this. Well, I don't know, I like Windows, so just leave it like this. Or change it, I don't know. Whatever you want, but uh, it won't make much difference. On pressing close button, exit application or minimize to system tray. Whatever you like, if you want uh, software to actually close, when you want to close it, use exit application. That's what uh, we like to do. And then there's also the TV tab that allows you, if uh, on your local network you have a TV that uh, allows for direct media streaming, you can um, use BeReader to directly stream the files that you download, of movies, movies, or any media that you download to the TV. We don't use it, so feel free to use it if you want. But I think there are better use, uh, there are better better options for it. So we just leave it as it is. And that's our tutorial on how to use BinReader. I hope that um, you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you have some uh, other question or if you'd like to comment on anything that we missed on this video, well, just give us a comment in the YouTube comment section or on our website. We would love to hear from you. Bye-bye.